Greg Daniels is a very talented writer. If you like comedy TV shows, you've probably watched shows written by him, because he's written for SNL, Seinfeld, The Simpsons, The Office, Parks and Recreation, and more, all incredibly well-received shows. Very recently, he has co-created and written the Netflix original show Space Force. Due to his history of incredible shows, one can only assume that Space Force will be a universally loved and... Oh. It's weird. Space Force has impressive sets, expensive looking CGI, and it's packed with talented actors, including Steve Carell, Lisa Kudrow, John Malkovich, Ben Schwartz, Jane Lynch, Jimmy O. Yang, and more, many of which having previous experience in sitcoms. So, what went wrong? I want to start off by saying that the topic of this video is not why I don't like Space Force. Personally, I thought it was just pretty meh. The topic of this video is exploring why such a clearly talented group of people made such a badly received show, since regardless of my opinion or your opinion on Space Force, it was pretty badly received. Okay, here we go. Steve called me and said, would you like to do a show about Space Force with me? There was no show. There was no idea. It was really based on nothing except the name that made everybody laugh. A big reason that the show didn't really take off among critics was its lack of direction. The show came about from this overall concept that generally had potential, yet it never went beyond that. Despite the fact that the concept of Space Force is all about going into new territory, the show itself fails to do so. Many say that the show is on the verge of doing something really interesting, but it's too afraid to go there. For example, CBR.com says that their mockery of Space Force is disappointingly tame. The show feels unsure of itself, so instead of finding its footing, it relies on the fact that it's full of actors and writers that the watchers will have previously enjoyed the work of. I mean, just for the cast, I, I want to watch it. With or without the quarantine, this is the perfect show to watch. You have Steve Carell and Greg Daniels teaming up again. Given the content of the show... To establish a Space Force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. One would assume that it's more satirical than anything else. But no, Space Force sticks with a The Office feeling workplace comedy that keeps any social commentary or political digs to a low. Even positive reviews from critics like this one agree that the show is kind of lacking. Jimmy O. Yang phrases it rather well here. Imagine if this is The Office uh, that's shot like a hundred million dollar Marvel movie. They have upped their budget but lessened the relatability that The Office had, since working in an office is far more accessible than working within the Space Force. And in an interview with Vox, Daniel said that it's not our intention to go all out and poke fun at the military. Steve and I both have relatives in the military. Although the stance is fair, it's not a fitting one to create anything satirical, and that has led to what feels like an inherently satirical topic to, well, not be that. But Space Force might just need some space. The character of Mark Naird is pretty different from Michael Scott, but, uh, you know, and it doesn't look at all the same. This is a much more cinematic, uh, big scope show. But, you know, I think that they will recognize the sense of humor that's behind things and maybe the sort of spirit of an approach to human beings. Greg Daniels' shows have a history of starting off rough in the first season and really improving as they go on. In The Office, it took an entire season of Michael being closed off towards the audience and towards his employees, and offensive. Would you like some googie googie? Before Daniels realized that they needed to make Michael a lot kinder. I'm really proud of you. This change upped the show's quality a lot. So hopefully as Space Force continues, Carell and Daniels will make this kind of core realization. It could make this show out of this world. If you're sick of hearing me complain, check out this video on how community perfectly uses implications. Or check out this video. And if you like and subscribe, you'll be able to erase one of my terrible space puns from your mind, so I highly recommend doing so. Thanks for watching.